So I have heard a lot tonight about what our organization is here doing, but to my knowledge, I am the first one from Moms for Liberty to speak tonight. And I'd just like to state for the record, Moms for Liberty does not condone hate, and we condemn any hateful actions that took place outside of this meeting. I personally am here to address two main things regarding your LGBTQ guidelines that you release to staff, but not parents. Those are the sanctity of the family and the sanctity of our republic. Either parents have the right to direct the upbringing of their children, or they don't. Either we have a representative form of government, or we don't. According to your guidelines, we have neither. Your guidelines allow a minor, which in case we need reminded, is a person under the age of full legal responsibility, someone society has deemed is not responsible enough to buy a lottery ticket, change their name, or vote, children who you don't even trust to carry their own inhalers or ibuprofen, these children, can walk into a school, tell a teacher they identify as a different gender, want to use new names and pronouns, and you see no need to identify their parents or to tell their parents. Parents are the legal, as legal guardians of their children, are responsible to provide protection, education, and care. But apparently, in your eyes, shouldn't be given the opportunity to do so. To be clear, my issue is not with any transgender children. My issue is with you keeping more strain upon that child by enabling them to live a double life. Can you honestly not see how that would add to anxiety, depression, and even potentially lead to suicide? The real issue here is you believe you must protect children from their parents. I reject that notion. Parents as a whole are more trustworthy than any government entity. They should decide what is best for their children, not you. Beyond the issue of parental rights, you have undermined our representative, representative form of government. In a republic, we elect people to make our decisions on our behalf, and you are responsible to us via an election for the decisions you make. These guidelines were not put in place by you. Unelected staff circumvented the system and used as justification a 2016 policy which was passed, which was not intended to do any of these things. I myself was here when it passed. I, had, I heard board member after board member say, it's not a bathroom policy, and I wouldn't vote for it if it was, and one of you even said, we have no plans to change procedure. What is the point of this board if staff committees and other non-elected entities are responsible for the things that really matter? If you are not willing to do your elected duty, then much like you have done to parents, you should be cut out of the picture. In this republic, laws are made by legislative bodies, not by executive order, not by judges, and certainly not by the FHSAA. You claim to be following law, but no such law actually exists. What you're really doing is running scared of lawsuits. Our rights as parents don't end at the classroom door, but yours certainly end at mine. As long as this policy is in place, none of my children will attend a BPS school because I will not put them at the risk of people who don't understand their authority and fail to recognize mine. 